two of the world's biggest companies are in combat. The prize for the winner will be control of the fastest growing form of entertainment in the world, video games. In one corner is the Japanese entertainment giant, Sony. For years, its original PlayStation laid waste to all rivals. Now Sony is betting the company on its successor becoming a bigger phenomenon. My favourite phrase about PlayStation recently, someone described it as the fastest growing religion in Europe. And it has that sort of feel to it. But now, muscling in with its own games console is an even richer, even more powerful rival, Microsoft. We absolutely believe we can be the number one leader in that market space, no question. And we wouldn't be in the market if we didn't think that was possible. But failure could spell disaster for the world's most valuable company. It's big risk, both in terms of financial risk and in redefining Microsoft's brand and the way that people think about Microsoft. It could be an enormous step forward for us, but if we stumble, it'll be a painful and exp expensive misstep. Sony and Microsoft are locked in a high-stakes game, and on Friday, as PlayStation 2 is launched in the UK, a multi-billion pound war starts for the heart of home entertainment. Only six weeks to go till the UK launch of PlayStation 2. Its success will depend on its having the best games. This is all going on, you know. Martin Kenwright is developing a driving game for the new console. Martin's come with a sound recordist to the San Remo Rally in Italy to get the game's sound effects just right. In the game's war, developers go to extraordinary lengths to make their creations as lifelike as possible. He must be taking his grandmother to the shops, I think. We're here to do basically as much research as possible on the tracks, on the environment, on the cars to meet all the teams, and basically to get every bit of reference we need to make a computer game. Games are no longer made by lone programmers in bedrooms. Millions are now spent on games production. We've been developing the game for about a year now, and we're reaching some pretty big deadlines where we have to have the game almost feature complete. And probably in the next three or four weeks, some big decisions are going to be made about whether we're going to do you know, three or four subsequent sequels. So it's quite an important time, you know, especially for us to get all the final polish on the game. Martin's game is due for release next summer, but even at this early stage and without the sound effects, it looks promising. A billion pounds of game software was sold last year in Britain alone, and with console makers taking a cut on each one, hit games and star developers are crucial ammunition in the games war. Two of the business world's fastest movers, Sony and Microsoft, are vying for the supremacy of the booming video games industry. The game's market is a cultural phenomenon. As a form of entertainment, it's been vastly underrated, and yet in terms of sales, it's bigger than movies, bigger than videos, and fast catching up with the music business. And as current market leaders, Sony are in pole position. Downtown San Francisco, Sony's Metrion Center. The release of PlayStation 2 has been staggered around the world. Now, five weeks before the UK launch, America has its turn. A thousand games addicts have queued up all day, desperate for the new machine. Doors open at midnight, but until then, people in the line endure some old-fashioned entertainment. are close to the front of the line, aren't you? We're getting there, yeah, I'm about 40th. So. About 40th? So when did you have to get here in the morning to be 40th in line? About 6.30. About 6.30 in the morning, so you guys have been waiting well over 12 hours for this new PlayStation. The new console is Sony's most important product ever. 
at its peak, the original PlayStation accounted for 40% of Sony's profits. These are all being ready for the people outside who've been waiting for a while, so when they get in here, they'll be ready to go as soon as... The first PlayStation still dominates the $20 billion global games market. The new console has to deliver this and more. So far, so good. Well, we're obviously very excited, and I have to say it's the biggest thing that um, we've ever done. I mean, PlayStation, when we launched in 95, was a huge success, but is a scale so much less significant than on PlayStation 2. The demand in Japan has outstripped anyone's forecast. So they've currently sold 3.5 million PlayStation 2s in Japan. They launched six months ago, and they've managed to sell 3.5 million, which took them around about two and a half years to do on PlayStation 1. <laughs> First in line is Paul Krivsder, young, cash-rich, and with ample free time, he is the perfect PlayStation customer for Sony. Sony aren't the only players in the games market. Two other Japanese companies, Sega and Nintendo, are also in the business, but they have sold mainly to children. So in claiming the cash of mostly male, 20-somethings like Paul, Sony have left the rest for dead in the adult games market. Until now. PlayStation's grip on this grown-up market is about to be challenged by the richest kid on the block. In just over 25 years, Microsoft have risen to the top of the personal computer business. 90% of the world's computers use their software, and they have a stock market worth of over $300 billion. Now, the world's most valuable company want to conquer the games machine business, and they don't like losing. Redmond, an hour outside Seattle, at Microsoft's Games HQ. A thousand people are plotting here to make their company the kingpin of the games machine business. Jay Allard, a 31-year-old multimillionaire, is not exactly a typical corporate executive, but he's been charged with developing Microsoft's rival to PlayStation 2, the enigmatically named Xbox. I think Xbox is critical to Microsoft. You know, if you look in your everyday life, how important is fun as a component of your success in life? It's critical. People that don't take themselves, uh, you know, don't have a sense of humor or take themselves too seriously usually aren't the most happy and successful people. Similarly, I think Microsoft uh, is taking itself a little too seriously these days, and it's time for us to break out, be a little bit more fun. And this prototype is what Microsoft's image of fun currently looks like. Due out next year, the big sell is that it'll be three times more powerful than PlayStation 2. We don't have to go that far because we still know the user account was tied. The Xbox High Command meet in their war room to discuss how to topple Sony. He can share that track. No, but with you, take right? the, the stats example is a better example because in the stats. Robbie Bach is in charge of harnessing the talents of Allard and his team. Bach's job is to keep a close eye on the multi billion dollar budget and deadlines. This project has been on a um, very tight timeline from the beginning, with almost every aspect of it being tight. Um, we're right on the edge of having several big breakthroughs. We're also at the point where we got to start making the tough decisions. Sure, absolutely. Right? We're at the point where we've been kind of dreaming for a year or however long it's been, and we've had a lot of grand ideas, and some of those areas are just not going to be there for launch. Where can you manage that? Where the Xbox is Microsoft's biggest ever project. If you compare it to something like Windows 95, this will be dramatically bigger than that in terms of our focus, our effort, and our intent to be successful. Obviously, Windows 95 at the time was a big event, but when you look at what we're trying to do, we're trying to reach consumers around the world with a new message and a new product. That's going to take a scale and a commitment and effort that Microsoft's never done before. Over the short lifetime of the video games industry, the technical capacity of the machines has improved rapidly. Year-on-year, -year, consoles have provided clearer graphics, better audio, and more exciting experiences for the player. Games technology, and which company boasts the best, is then a key battleground for both Sony and Microsoft.
That was good. That was really good. Well done. Games developer Martin Kenwright is getting closer to a crucial meeting with Sony to discuss progress on the rally game. Today, he's in a studio trying to simulate the panicked reaction of spectators to cars swerving into them. It's not too bad. A series of infrared cameras pick up the movements of reflective balls on a bodysuit. That is then translated onto a computer screen. What we're trying to do is, you know, the whole idea of a car coming at 100 miles an hour is you've got to get out the way. But, you know, your first instinct, you're going to dive like a goalkeeper and it'll look, you know, a little bit false. So you've got to kind of put all the mass, all your body weight up into the top half of your body and literally just throw yourself across the way. No arms. Just no arms, no legs, and don't think about your landing. You'll be safe. Trust me, you'll be OK. <laughs> The PlayStation 2 allows us to do things undreamed of before, for example, a rally game. We now have the technology where we can create thousands of people, we can create spectacular terrain, we can create weather, we can have trees blowing in the wind, we have mud, dirt. It just feels, you can almost have to wash your hands after playing it, it feels so real. Martin's team are working round the clock for his big meeting with Sony. But Sony aren't the only console makers interested in Evolution Studios, his company. Good games are in scarce supply, so talent like Martin's is courted by both sides. Microsoft, um, in my, from my own personal experience, are very serious. Um, an interesting story is when I set Evolution up, uh, just over 14 months ago, I think we'd been running for about a month, and uh, all of a sudden, you know, the phone calls started coming in, and you know, they knew of my background, and they were actively, you know, soliciting Evolution Studios. They flew lots of people over from America, and very, very aggressively, you know, tried to you know, do a, a development deal with us. Although in the end Sony signed Martin up, Microsoft struck back by announcing they'd done deals with 170 other game development studios. Developers are eager to work on J. Allard's machine, which is designed to be more powerful than PlayStation 2. Quite simply, the Xbox boasts more advanced graphics to play with. Our focus and our attention is on the most compelling experiences. And the experiences on a video game console are all about the games. So really, when we've designed Xbox, we designed it for the game developer. It's really a, a system by game developers for game developers. And by appealing to their needs and their sensibilities, we actually think that we've created not only the most powerful, but the most approachable and friendly box for game developers to realize their creative visions. While designing what they believe to be PlayStation beating hardware, Jay and his colleagues draw inspiration from an old favorite. Seamus, baby. Oh, hey, it's good to see you're working hard today, too. Double or nothing, what do you say? Uh, I don't know, man. You got game today? I don't know, man. This is a 20-year-old machine called Robotron. Oh, this is the literature of video games. This is the penultimate video game. This is, this is the old man in the sea of video games. This is the Aesop's fables of video Pay games. Pay special attention to the score between player one and two. Ironically, it was at this gaming dinosaur that many key decisions were made about the kind of features the Xbox will offer. Really, a lot of the Xbox design uh, came, came into being at this machine, where Seamus, myself, and some other guys on the team would come down routinely to the Robotron machine after uh, hours and hours of work for late night, uh, for some late night relaxation. And we would uh, debate features, and we'd have an argument about feature. I wanted it out, he wanted it in, and we'd play for it instead of flipping for it or making some kind of educated decision. Instead, we would earn it. Early games like this, in development for the Xbox, show Jay's late nights may be paying off. The sword has been drawn. Microsoft want to beat Sony at their own game. Technology is not the only arena in which video games companies compete. Because when two of the world's most powerful businesses clash, it's credibility that becomes an issue too. And when the customers that both Microsoft and Sony are targeting, young, style-conscious adults, a notoriously fickle consumer group, it's clear that branding and image become critical.
at the Brixton Academy in London. Some of the best breakdancing crews around gather to compete in the finals of the UK B-Boy Championship. The competition has been sponsored for the last few years by PlayStation. Alan Wellsman was one of PlayStation's earliest employees. In 1995, he masterminded the UK launch of the original PlayStation. Now he's steering through the British release of the new model. The reason we get involved in sponsorships like this is because they are really at the cutting edge of youth culture. We've done an awful lot of it since the launch of PlayStation, ranging from snowboarding, breakdancing, uh, skateboarding events to festival culture and uh, putting on our own events as well that have revolved around gaming culture. So that's the kind of things we've done in the past and they're the kind of things I think where you gradually grow respect with the audience that you're marketing to. This was the key to Sony's success with the original PlayStation. With just a few weeks to launch, Alan is coordinating a major campaign to reinforce that message for PlayStation 2. It has to hit home, because as Sony are all too aware, the threat from Microsoft looms large. Microsoft probably has a different audience at the moment, but will be trying to step into that audience that PlayStation has nurtured for the last five years. The truth of it is that Microsoft have got deep pockets and have got a will to get involved in this business, so we expect them to be fierce competitors. Fortnight after the break dancing and three weeks to go till PlayStation 2's launch, Alan Wellsman and his colleague Darren are in Los Angeles. They're here to oversee the filming of a multi-million pound TV commercial for the new machine. It's built around what they imagine to be a hip but mysterious new concept, the third place. It's all about the fact that it's the third place is something that's unique to the individual, and that's the whole point. It's, it's different. Exactly. Exactly. It's everybody's own personal idea. What I really like is the fact that it is, it's that thing where you really aren't sure that you, and what we're going to get is it's going to definitely make the consumers feel that they won't be 100% sure of exactly what it is or whether it's good or bad. It's going to it'll really disorient people and make them feel slightly uncomfortable, which of course, for the audience we're going for is exactly what we're after. The ad is being directed by Hollywood legend David Lynch, creator of Blue Velvet and Twin Peaks. Like that. And you got to see Jason. It's all got to be orchestrated. Gary, put your thinking cap on. Then, then, then stop, and then whip it out with the face. What out, Gary? Jeez. It's Lynch's task to visualize the third place, a dimension somewhere between reality and fantasy, the PlayStation experience. A baffled Alan Wellsman lets the movie magician loose with his tricks. That's good, Dave. Okay. Fire! Okay. This is so beautiful. <laughs> if it's not too clear what it's about, then Lynch must be doing a good job. Excellent work, everyone. Even in a medium where abstract imagery is all-pervasive, Sony are investing unusual faith in the third-place concept. After the filming, Alan meets with the creative director, Trevor Beatty, the man behind PlayStation's advertising. I think it's just a case of picking out the, uh, picking out the really key audience, and you always get a bit of waste, don't you, on the sides, but... We should be fine. I think it's almost Friday night Channel 4 slots is the kind of key. It's not about the product. That's, that's the great thing about it. It's a, it's a movement rather than a product. It's like a religion. It's, it's a way of life. In the advertising world, BT is regarded as something of a guru, and he's homed in on a stumbling block for PlayStation's new rival. I don't think Microsoft have an image problem. I think they have an image, and it's probably the wrong image um, for the one that's required for them to break this market. So they come from a different universe. They come from, they come from the office, they come from the work universe. Sony PlayStation has a massive credibility that, that Microsoft's money can't buy. 
you know, you can throw money at the problem, but it takes years of quality output to put yourself where PlayStation are. In Seattle, Microsoft is monitoring the PlayStation launch. They have a half a billion dollar marketing budget, but will it be enough to overcome a fundamental disadvantage? Uh, we don't have the real thing here, but we have some st uh, early work. Microsoft uh, early are simply work. not cool with their target audience. And one yeah, obvious reason for this image problem is their founder and uh, figurehead, Bill Gates, a point they first addressed when the Xbox project was unveiled earlier so, uh, this year. Let me help you to accessorize a little right. bit here. We, we don't have the box, but we do have the, the leather jacket, so. Bill isn't really an icon for this target audience, to be honest. You wouldn't think of him as the guy who walks around with three earrings in his ear and has, you know, a different kind of clothing style than, than most people wear. And so you really have to think about him not as much as an icon for the target audience, but an icon for Microsoft's commitment to the platform. And the icons for the target audience are people like Jay Allard, who really live and breathe in that environment. Nighttime in central Seattle and multi-millionaire man of the people, Jay Allard is still hard at work. Albeit in the relaxed environment of Seattle's bar scene. I want to ask an Amber. These are people that are very passionate and grew up on video games and are looking for the next generation experience. So often when I'm in bars, I'll just kind of, you know, talk it up with the, the various patrons here and get get their read on the way games are going and what they'd like to see and get some really good ideas and inspiration. So, uh, you know, it's, these places are flooded with who we're, who we're going to be talking to and selling to. Um, we, th we thought of an idea. Oh, yeah? You work in virtual sex into it. <laughs> make, an action, make an action pack for the guy and the girl. You can play, you can play online, you know, with your, with your girlfriend miles away and have sex virtually, of course. It's definitely an idea, but it's the product name is Xbox, not Triple Xbox. But it could be the Triple Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell them a little bit about Xbox, and they'll say, well, what company is doing it? And I say, Microsoft. And sometimes you'll get the reaction, you know, Microsoft. What are they doing with the game system? Or Microsoft, you can't work there. You know, you seem too much like me um, to work at Microsoft. But often, often they'll come back and they'll say, wow, you know, that's a, I didn't think about Microsoft being a hardware company, but they probably will do a really good job at it. Microsoft know they've got some ground to make up in the credibility race, but they do have financial muscle, technical prowess, and a deadly serious desire to win. We absolutely believe we can be the number one leader in that market, market space, no question. And we wouldn't be in the market if we didn't think that was possible. Even though dominance of the video games industry adds up to very big business indeed, there's an even more lucrative prize at stake here. Games consoles have become so sophisticated they can function on more than one level. Sony have declared as much. PlayStation 2 isn't called a games console, it's called a computer entertainment device. Basically, Sony want their baby to run your living room and suck you into a world of joined up home entertainment. Back at their showcase Metrian Center in San Francisco, Sony are keen to offer you a glimpse of their vision of the future. And it's more than just about games. PlayStation 2 has a built-in DVD player, and you can link up other devices through it. You'll be able to connect your camcorder to it, or a digital camera, or any home recording device, a mini-disc, something like that. You can connect all of these, so if you wanted to record yourself and put yourself into a game, or use some software on PlayStation 2 that allows you to compile home videos, whatever, you can do that through the PlayStation 2. But much more than this, PlayStation 2 will have internet access, so information and entertainment can be downloaded from the web and experienced via the once humble games console. PlayStation 2 is 
probably the key component of his strategy to build into this networked entertainment world. The world where you can download the movies of your choice and the uh, music of your choice. It's vitally important for that, as if you like, as a Trojan horse in the living room to provide that to consumers. Microsoft are more circumspect about their long-term plans for the Xbox, sticking to the line that it's really just a machine to play games on. They say Sony are barking up the wrong tree. I actually would argue that the console market isn't drifting that way. I think there's a, there's a phrase we use where we say technologies converge, but devices don't. And in fact, in the technology that's going on in this space, things are converging. In fact, our Xbox is based very much on a very traditional PC architecture design. So that technology is converging, and that's good. But the device itself, the box, has to be very dedicated to what you want to have happen in a game. Because otherwise you get what I call the toaster telephone, which is an interesting device that technically you can produce, but the consumers don't really want. They want a great toaster and a great telephone, not some bad mix of the two. Right now, this appears to be a clear difference between the two giants. But it will surely disappear if the game's console sitting under your TV does indeed become the nerve center of home entertainment because in this new battle, the potential rewards could be immense. Evolution Studios just outside Liverpool, and it's Judgment Day. The men from Sony have arrived to inspect Martin Kenwright's new creation. The rally game's not finished yet, but they are looking at the culmination of a year's work. Will they like it? No, I guess they're listening to the radios or whatever to see what, who's coming through next. No, what happens is the marshals whistle, and this is what you hear. They, they see the helicopter overhead and the search of the... In fact, the initial reaction from Sony is so positive, they want to buy a sequel, even before the first game's finished. In the end, they know it's good games that will allow them to make the most of their few months' head start over Microsoft. Sony are relying on developers like Martin to come up with the goods. It's as big for Sony as it is for us. This is probably one of Sony's you know, biggest titles for next year. The driving sector is probably one of the biggest sectors, if not the biggest in games. And, you know, we're developing essentially the pillar title for them. And I think in the you know, the armory, if want of a better expression, you know, the, with the battle with Microsoft, I think, you know, we're going to figure pretty highly. In games parlance, the Microsoft versus Sony fight is set to be the mother of all beat-em-ups. In its brief existence, this business has proved to be volatile. Failure will spell loss of face and financial catastrophe. Victory will mean the winner makes itself a permanent guest in your living room.